Hi, everyone. My name is Yuan Li from Spring Brook University. And I'm in a Professor Anatoly Frankel's group. And our group uh, name is Structure and Dynamics of Applied Nanomaterials. And uh, I'm glad to have this opportunity to share with you our recent work. It's about a multimodal approach for determining the electronic and atomic structure of series supported platinum single atoms catalyst. Mm. Okay, then move to the next. This is the outline of today's talk. It uh, includes three parts. First, I would like to briefly introduce single atom catalysts. What are they, why we study them? And for this type of catalyst, the challenges for structural characterization. And to address those challenges, our strategies are to improve the synthesis method and to apply multimode approach. And today I focus on talking about multimode approach for studying the structure of this type of catalyst. And at last is the summary. Um, in single atoms catalyst, the, sink, uh, the metal atoms are single dispersed on their support. As shown in figure ABC here, the yellow metal balls are single dispersed uh, uh, atoms and they could be supported on metal oxides or on other particles or on two dimensional materials. And this figure shows the timeline of important developments of single atom colors. And before 2000, there actually have been reports about single atom catalysts. And in 2011, uh, Tao Zhao's group reported the first practical single atom catalyst. It's uh, uh, iron oxide supported platinum. And since then, this field becomes very busy. And the research focuses on three directions. First, to uh, develop a synthesis method to obtain single atom catalyst. And second, to improve the stability of single atoms. And third, to uh, explore the novel properties of single atom catalysts. In terms of catalytic properties, uh, single atom catalysts have been used in chem many chemical reactions. And according to the reports, uh, they show better catalytic properties compared to their uh, nanosized counterparts. And that is one of the reasons why we study them. And the second reason is that in, si in single atom catalysts, each single site could be active site. And so in principle, all single atoms could make contribution to the reaction. That is very important, especially for precious metals. Precious metals are very important uh, catalysts for many industrial reactions, but they're very expensive and they're rare in nature. So in single atom catalyst, precious metals can be used very efficient. And I think, uh, and also, as you can see here, uh, most reports are about platinum, iridium, gold, palladium, and silver single atom catalyst. And I think there's uh, another reason why we study single atom catalyst. And before I get to the point, I'd like to uh, point out one of the challenges in studying nanosized catalysts, and that is spatial heterogeneity. And it includes intercluster heterogeneity and intracluster heterogeneity. Intercluster heterogeneity describes differences between particles within the same sample. Within the same sample, particles, they may have different size, shape, and structure. Even within the same particle, there is intracluster heterogeneity. And such heterogeneity describes differences between atoms within the same particle. Within the same particle, particles, atoms located at different places, they may have different coordination number, bond length, and charge. And because of this heterogeneity problems, it's difficult for us to directly correlate structure with properties. And this uh, heterogeneity problems may not be problems for our single atom catalyst. At least there is no intracluster heterogeneity because in single atom catalyst, atoms are single dispersed. Now let's talk about the challenges for studying single atom catalyst. First, single atoms have very high surface free energy. So they intend to aggregate into clusters or nanoparticles. P try to, to avoid that, people try to lower the weight loadings of single atom. But that 
would limit the sensitivity of imaging, scattering, and spectroscopic techniques. Second, um, due to the non-uniform nature of most solid supports, the local bonding environment around single atoms are not necessarily identical. So this type of heterogeneity will also make us difficult to determine the structure of active single site. To address these questions, we developed our synthesis method. And in this method, we use a carrier phase to dissolve and disperse platinum ions on the nanosized cereal. And by using this method, we obtained our sample. In this sample, according to ICP results, the weight loading of platinum is high, it's about 1.8%. And since now we have the sample, we would like to uh, characterize the structure. Here, I listed several structure-related questions. First, we would like to confirm in our single atom catalyst sample, planet atoms are single dispersed. Second, what are their charge states? The electronic structure of platinum. We would also like to know the interaction between planet single atoms and the support. And at last, we want to determine the three-dimensional structure around platinum. And to address these questions, we have to combine multiple techniques, including electron microscopy, infrared spectroscopy, X-ray photoelectrospectroscopy, resonant elastic X-ray scattering, X-ray absorption spectroscopy, and DFT calculations. And next, let's look at those questions one by one. First, are platinum atoms isolated? To address that question, uh, we took STM images of our single atom catalyst sample. And for comparison, we also prepare another sample using the same synthesis method, but with platinum excluded. For a single atom catalyst sample, as you can see here, the image shows several isolated white spots, and those spots cannot be observed in our reference sample. We also checked other images for the single atom catalyst sample, and we cannot observe any nanoclusters or nanoparticles. So these images suggest in our samples, most likely platinum atoms are single dispersed, but we know electron microscopy is a local technique. It is possible that there are some particles there, but they're just not captured by the images. So to confirm that, we perform the GIFS experiment. In GIFS experiment, we use carbon monoxide to probe all the platinum species on the surface. Here, we have the, ser we have the serial supported platinum single atom catalyst sample, and we also prepared serial supported platinum oxide. For each sample, we have two spectra. The red curves were spectra collected under seal, the black curves were spectra collected after we flush away carbon monoxide. Let's first look at uh, uh, this sample, serial supported platinum oxide. Under seal, there are several peaks. The peak at 2170 is assigned to gas phase carbon monoxide, and the peak at about 2090, it's assigned to a top bound seal on platinum delta plus. And this peak is not symmetric. There's a peak at about, there's a shoulder at about 2045. And it is assigned to a top bound seal on platinum zero. And at 1835, there's a peak. And this peak is assigned to bridge bound seal on platinum. The existence of these peaks suggests in this sample, platinum is in mixed uh, species or in mixed valence states. In addition to that, the appearance of these two peaks, the peak at 2045 and the peak at 1835, suggests the existence of large particles in this sample. However, these two peaks cannot be observed in our single atom catalyst sample. Our single atom catalyst, there, after we flush away, so there's a sharp and symmetric peak at about 2090. And this peak, as I said, is assigned to uh, a top bound seal on platinum delta plus. So this results suggest and confirms um, in our, in our uh, single atom catalyst sample, there's no clusters, no nanoparticles, and platinum atoms are single dispersed on the support. And, in, and for our single atom catalyst, platinum is in delta plus state. And to determine this data, we performed XPS. Here, I have a spectra of serial supported platinum single atom catalyst and serial supported platinum particles. 
for zero supported planar particles, there are two pairs of peaks. The blue ones are psi 2 plus 2 plus, and the green ones are psi 2 plus 0. That suggests in this sample, 2 plus and 0, and 0 state uh, coexist. But for a single atom catalyst, there's only one pair of peak, and there are psi 2 plus 2 plus. So this XPS result suggests that there's only one platinum species on the surface, and in this species, platinum is in 2 plus state. Uh, I think I'll pause here in case you have some questions. Thank you. That's a, uh, that's a great start. Um, because I don't know anything about uh, uh, catalysts, I'll have to ask a very basic question. Can you explain to me a little bit more about how drifts works? And um, uh, just a little bit more about how it works and how I should be interpreting the, um, the spectra you're showing. Um, yes. And uh, for drifts, uh, you just need to, uh, you put a sample in the, uh, in the reactor and then you flow. Here we use carbon monoxide because carbon monoxide is a very good uh, probing gas to detect any plant species on the surface. So basically we put a sample in and then we flow carbon monoxide. And uh, uh, when we are flowing carbon monoxide, we collect the, those uh, red spectra. And then we see some uh, peaks here. And those peaks are assigned to different carbon monoxide bonding on the uh, surface of platinum. And, uh, um, and according to the position of these uh, peaks, we can decide uh, uh, what type of uh, bond is that, and we can determine what type of platinum species is that. So for our drift experiment, we collected the uh, spectra on the seal, and also we flush away seal and to see what peaks are left. And that can uh, help us de determine which peaks, uh, you know, is uh, uh, which plant species are uh, strongly bond with carbon monoxide. And the drift is the uh, average technique. It sees all plant species on the surface, not like uh, electron microscopy. I so that's why, yeah. So that's why I use that to uh, uh, combine that to the results with uh, electron microscopy. Excellent, thank you. There's a question about um, whether the platinum oxidation state is a, a strictly two plus, or if we should think of it as something more intermediate between zero and two plus? According to the position, it's, uh, uh, and uh, after I compare with the uh, uh, literature, and I feel like it's close to the two plus, uh, but I feel uh, drifts cannot directly tell the uh, oxidation state of platinum, so that's why we want to use XPS to confirm that. Okay. Do you ever see a platinum four plus? I think so, uh, because I I think uh, platinum two plus actually is uh, rare to see because the platinum two plus oxide is uh, not stable. But uh, platinum usually uh, the stable phase for platinum oxide is platinum four plus. Okay. All right. Um, uh, thank you. You should continue, and we'll come back to more questions a little bit later. Okay. Um, okay. In single atom catalyst and uh, uh, in single atom catalyst, uh, the interaction between the single atom and the support must be very strong. And such strong interaction will affect electronic properties of the single atoms and the support. So we study oxygen 2p states and platinum 5d states. To study oxygen, oxygen 2p states, we perform the valence band. Uh, mm -hmm. Well yes. And uh, here for references, we also collect the spectra of planar foil, plan, uh, pure cereal, cereal supported planar particles, and cereal supported planar oxide. As you can see here, for all the samples, they show very similar features to pure cereal. And the broad feature we see here is due to hybridized oxygen 2p states. And for the nanoparticle, particle, the position of this peak is very close to uh, uh, pure cereal, but for planet oxide, it shifts to the left. For planet single atom catalyst, it shifts to the right. So these results suggest that different planet species has different effects to the electronic properties of the support. The results also suggest that in our, for our single atom catalyst, platinum single atoms have different uh, nature from that of planar particle and planar oxide. 
and to study planet five distance, we perform the balance band rigs. And uh, um, before I discuss the results, I would like to briefly introduce this technique. Um, this schematic shows the rigs process for planet metal. It involves three states and two steps. In the first step, the incident X-ray photos excite two P electrons to occupy the five states, leaving a core hole at the core level. In the second step, electrons from occupied five states fill the core hole, producing X-ray emission. So RIGS provides information of both occupied and occupied states. Here is the corresponding RIGS map for planet metal. The x-axis is incident energy, the y-axis is energy transfer. The zero energy transfer corresponds to elastic peak. The main feature we see here is due to transitions between occupied and occupied states. The position and the shape of this feature are sensitive to the local bond environment around the planet. For example, for planet metal, the elastic peak merge with one state excitations, and the shape of this position tears towards this direction. But for planet oxide, this is Rick's map for planet oxide. It, it is a insulator, so the position of this feature shapes up. And the shape of this feature tears towards this direction. That is because there, except for the DD transition, there's also a transition between planet 5D and oxygen 2P states somewhere here, as uh, demonstrated in the schematic. Now let's get back to our results. Here I have Rick's maps for planet oxide, planet foil, planet nanoparticle, and planet single atom catalyst. As you can see here, for planet single atom catalyst, Catalyst is showing unique features. For planet foil and planet nanoparticles, the shape of this feature tears towards this direction. But for a single atom catalyst, it's towards this direction, similar to that of planet oxide. I said that is because, except for the DD transition, there's also a transition between planet 5D and oxygen 2P states. So this results confirms that in single atom catalyst, there's strong interaction between the planet and the single atoms and the support. And such strong interaction affect electronic properties of the reports and also planet single atoms. And that strong interaction may also determine the local uh, atomic structure around planet single atoms. So to study that, we perform the SAFs experiments. Here we have this and also if SAFs. For references, we also collect the spectra of planet foil, planet oxide, and planet nanoparticles. Let's first look at the spectra. At the first glance looks like the spectrum of planet single atom catalyst, the red curve, is very similar to that of planet oxide, the green curve, but they are actually different. In, for example, in this region of Zens. In this region of Zens, for planet oxide, it shows some features, but for a single atom catalyst, it's uh, very broad features and uh, featureless. And the differences can also be observed in the case space, in this region of case space. And the differences are clearer in R space spectra. In R space spectra, for single atom catalyst and uh, planet oxide, the spectra show a pronounced peak at about 1.5 angstrom. And this peak is assigned to planet oxygen contribution. For planet oxide, there are two comparable peaks between 2.5 and 3.5 angstrom. And these two peaks are assigned to second nearest planet planet contribution and planet oxygen, planet oxygen, planet multiple scattering paths. For planet foil and planet nanoparticles, there are also two peaks between 2 and 3 angstrom. And they're assigned to first uh, nearest planet planet contribution. For a single atom catalyst, it also showed two peaks between two and three, but with unique features, not like platinum platinum in platinum oxide and not like platinum platinum in uh, platinum metallic. Uh, I'll post here in case you have questions. Thank you. That's, uh, that's really interesting. Um, uh, first, we have a question from Hui Zhou. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so I, I saw a question about the CO consumption. So uh, did you do the CO consumption to 
test uh, the dispersion of the catalyst? No. Okay. Yeah, I guess that the serious part will affect the consumption. So maybe mm -hmm. it uh, won't work. Okay. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, there's a couple of questions about the RICS plots. If you can go back for a second. The, yeah, that figure, that's very good. I couldn't quite follow um, whether you're looking at the white line region or a pre-edge region on the energy scale. Um, uh, where are you, uh, uh, that energy scale, where is it with respect to the edge? This is edge 11564. So the large feature at 11566 for the platinum dioxide, is that the white line? No, the white line only shows the center of this uh, uh, excitation. Yes, yes, exactly. So that's, that's the energy of the white line, though. Okay, all right. So you're seeing different... Huh, very interesting. Okay. Um, okay, let me look again at the question. Sorry. Um, uh, Yang Ha, did you have a question about the RICs also? Uh, yeah, so my, my basic question is uh, if you just basically integrate along the, the RIGS maps, I could imagine the uh, traditional X-ray absorption edge should look different. So is there any reason you stick with RIGS or you learn any or you get any additional information from the emission spectrum? Uh, yeah, so we do RIGS want to only want to study platinum 5d states and here um from this we can clear more clear see the interaction between the uh uh platinum single atoms and the support and we actually um we actually also can get that from subs i will talk about later but here um we want to like uh, more clear to visualize it I think also it's Anatole. I think also the additional advantage of RIGS is that um, the white line shape and X-ray absorption spectrum can be influenced not only by the oxidation state, by the particle size, for example, of ultra small uh, platinum clusters or nanoparticles, and it would not be it would not be easy to tell based on the white line whether you have single atoms or nanoparticles or a mixture. But RIGS shows very different uh, uh, very different uh, trend for nanoparticles shown in the bottom right corner and the single atoms shown in the bottom left corner. So it's a different uh, kind of imaging method of imaging the D-states that uh, is additionally useful compared to x uh, Okay, thanks. And since you are on this page, I have another question, which is on figure C. Uh, how do you define the, energy, the binding energy from this like, pretty noisy spectra? Uh, I think, I think uh, they uh, did the, they did the, uh, they did the uh, calibration using uh, like standard way before we do the experiment. And then we uh, studied, and that's why I have planned for and series here. And then we performed the experiments on our samples. Okay, very good. Uh, Matthew Marcus, you had a question? Yeah, in this slide, uh, if you look at the platinum foil versus the platinum nanoparticles, the, the uh, threshold seems to be shifted by about 3 EV. And same, similarly for platinum SACs versus platinum oxide. I'm wondering why there's such a big shift given that the XAS does, it doesn't show any such shift. Uh, here, actually, I'm not uh, sure about this shift is real because as you can see here, I don't actually, the, the picture here don't even show features uh, under energy transfer zero. That's because the uh, elastic peak is very strong and also our, uh, the weight loading of our sample is kind of uh, low. So we actually cannot for picture uh, about around here. So um, that's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the case for our single atom kinds and planar particle. So I'm not sure how to extend this feature, you know, 
and then determine if it's, there's a real shift or not. Yeah, still, it looks like if you just sort of plot, you know, plot one on top of the other, they appear to be shifted. For the same okay. energy transfer, uh, the, the incident energy is up by about 3 EV. I think, uh, Matthew, you are referring to the foil and nanoparticle, right? All this... Uh, yeah, and also the, the platinum oxide and SACs. Many of them were collected. I mean, some of them were, uh, this is a mix and match from different works. Ah. Group, and the uh, energy calibration was probably different okay. each experiment. Okay, um, you should continue. This is going very well, thank you. Okay, here we mentioned uh, for a single atom catalyst, there are two unique peaks between two and three angstrom. And this uniqueness can also be observed in our wavelength transform planet Earth 3H itself. Our wavelength transform is an integrated transformation uh, similar to Fourier transform, and it provides information about uh, location of different spectral components in K space, as demonstrated in this uh, figure. So, wavelength transform provides offers a straightforward way to discriminate different atoms within the same atomic shell. Here I have the wavelength transform for platinum foil, platinum oxide, platinum particles, and the platinum single atom catalyst. Uh, for platinum foil, platinum oxide, and platinum particles, as you can see, the features for platinum platinum contribution look like this. But for our single atom catalyst, the peaks we observed between two and three angstrom, it has features like this. It's quite different. So this results suggest uh, for our single atom catalyst, the peaks we observed between two and three angstrom are not due to platinum platinum contribution. And our hypothesis is platinum series contribution. And to confirm that, we performed itself's data analysis. And uh, uh, we tried different models, models including platinum oxygen, platinum platinum, platinum oxygen, platinum series. And in the best model, we have platinum oxygen, platinum cereal, and a platinum oxygen bond. And the best fitting results were summarized in this table. And this figure shows the uh, agreement between the experimental spectrum with the fitted spectrum. And from this table, uh, I can get several information. First, there is no platinum platinum bond. That, again, confirms in our single atom catalyst, platinum atoms are singly dispersed. Second, there are platinum oxygen and platinum cereal bonds. And that suggests the strong interaction between platinum single atoms and the support. And then the coordination number for platinum oxygen and platinum cereal are small. That suggests platinum single atoms stay on the surface of cereal support. Cells can provide us information about local bonding environment around platinum atoms, but it cannot help us determine the three-dimensional structure. So to determine that, we performed uh, DFT calculations. And for DFT calculations, all those results obtained from these techniques were used as inputs to optimize the structure. And also, the best models should have least energy. After DFT calculations, we obtained the best model. And this is the top view. This is side view. The uh, red balls are oxygen atoms, and the uh, gray balls are um, platinum atoms, and the yellow balls are cereal atoms. And in this best model, platinum stays on the 100 surface of nanosized cereal. And each platinum atom coordinates with four nearest oxygen atoms and uh, four second nearest uh, cereal atoms. And uh, in each unit cell of the cereal, there are four plant atoms on the surface. So at last, I'd like to uh, give the conclusions. In this work, um, by developing the synthesis method, we prepared series supported the platinum single atom catalyst with high platinum weight loading. And to studying the structure uh, of this catalyst, we combined multiple techniques, including electron microscopy, drifts, SAFs, RIGs, XPS, and DFT calculations. And by combining these techniques, we uh, confirm that in our single atom catalyst, uh, platinum atoms are single dispersed, and we determined the van state of platinum single atoms. And we studied 
the interaction between plant and zinc atoms and the solar support. We also determine the three-dimensional structure of plant and zinc atoms on the support. And also, at last, I want to say that from this work, I also learned something. I learned that in studying single atom catalyst, uh, not only we want to study single atom, we also want to study the interaction between single atom and the support, because that strong interaction affects the electronic and atomic structure of single atom and the support. And the structure change may, uh, may, um, may explain why they show good uh, catalytic properties. And at last, I want to thank the support from my group members and they're here. And this work is supported by DOE funding. And thank you. Very good, thank you. Um, so um, we will uh, uh, ask for questions here. Um, uh, Yang Ha, will you ask your question first and I'll keep looking through the list after that? Yeah, I'm only, uh, I have questions of your DFT. So did you just simply get a, a optimized structure with lowest energy or did you also use that structure to simulate the say the rigs or the, the other spectra and compare with your experiments? Uh, actually, for the DFT modeling, we have two constraints. One constraint is from, uh, it's the experimental results. Uh, because we know the virus state, we know the uh, local bond environment. So those results were used in um, optimizing the structure. And also we have several other candidates. As you said, we compared the energy and the, the one with least energy is the, uh, we use that as the best model. Uh, as you said, yeah, we probably can complete the loop you now too with the, uh, with, we, since we already know the structure, we can do some simulations for uh, rigs or subs, but we didn't done, we haven't done that yet, but uh, I think we can do that. Okay, so it's just the optimized structure with constraints from experiments. Yes, and, yeah. Very good. Um, a question for you is, you've told us a lot about spectroscopy to help determine more about um, uh, where the platinum is sitting. Um, mm -hmm. How has this kind of work folded back into uh, either new routes for synthesis or ideas for improved catalysts? Uh, actually, uh, we are uh, currently we are doing something toward these two directions. So once to using these results to optimize our uh, our catalyst and allow another way is to uh, to call this structure with the properties. So in terms of synthesis and for this these results, we uh, we see that uh, the local density of platinum on the serial support is actually high. That may explain why. When, you, when we hit the samples at certain temperatures or like under reducing uh, conditions, the uh, single atoms uh, uh, aggregate into clusters. And that is very bad be because for many reactions that requires high temperature or reducing experiment. So uh, with these results, I think we will try to you know, separate the, uh, the, the distribution of those uh, single atoms. And that's one way. Another way we're doing now uh, is that to occur a structure with the properties and we uh, can do some you know, low temperature react reactions like zero oxidation, and then to uh, try to correlate the structure with properties. Okay, very good. Um, Matthew Marcus, you had a question? Yeah, the uh, DFT structure you're showing on this slide, uh, it shows platinum in the atopsites that has a platinum cerium coordination of one, but uh, the excess, I believe you said it was four. So it seems like a discrepancy. No, it's four. Uh, uh, what do you mean? Uh, I think it must be four because we used uh, the results from ourselves uh, as inputs for DFT calculations. So in DFT calculations, the coordination number uh, of planet oxygen and plasma were constrained to be four. Right, but I'm um, looking at this picture and it shows, uh, it shows one nearest, uh, one cerium neighbor. Unless I'm totally misunderstanding the geometry. I mean, this figure, this is side view. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe I just show some wrong. No, maybe I, I can't no, show more figures, but I don't have, have it here, but I'm sure it's full. Okay, and do you get the right distance? Yes. 
the distance and the coordinate numbers are used as constraint. Okay, so you didn't allow the cerium to or the platinum to move. It can move. Uh, even though we apply some uh, constraints, we still let it uh, run itself. Um, and to get several candidates, and the best one like, agree the the one like best agree with our experiment data and with this energy survived. Okay.